All right, guys, so I just finished watching Imaginary, and I've never went from watching a movie straight to my computer to record faster in my life. Like, I got up from my couch, walked downstairs to my computer, and just immediately am recording. You ever have something really insane to you happen that you never could have expected at all, and you just cannot wait to tell a friend or, like, somebody you know about it? Like, you literally can't wait. That's how I feel right now about telling you guys about this movie. Now, this is a horror movie made by a studio called Blumhouse. They've made a lot of iconic horror movies like Get Out, out and The Purge and Paranormal Activity and even the Five Nights at Freddy's movie which I refuse to talk about because my take about it is so controversial I think I'll lose every single subscriber I have if I talk about that movie. It's because this movie was made by Blumhouse that even though it looks pretty stupid I was willing to give it a watch and just kind of give it the benefit of the doubt because there is a chance it could be good like I thought Get Out was going to be stupid too but it was actually a pretty good movie. Before I get into everything I would just kind of give you a little explanation of what this movie is even about and what the premise is but you can already kind of just imagine what it is it's just this little girl and she has an imaginary friend and it and it like is actually real and it just like terrorizes everybody like wow that's why there's no point in me even explaining the premise beyond that because th that's literally it that's the entire movie now i'm actually kind of reluctant to call this a horror movie even though that's like the genre that it's considered to be in because i feel like this is a horror movie in the way that arsenal in roblox is a first person shooter like sure it, it's a it's a shooter but like it's not it's not like a real one like like it's not one that you can actually kind of like play and take seriously it's like i don't know that's like the best analogy i can make about this movie is that like yeah i, I mean it's a horror movie i guess but it's not like it's not like a real one. My main complaint with this movie is that it tries too hard to be scary. Because like we talked about already, the concept for this movie is just the most cookie cutter shit imaginable. And it's not scary or disturbing or even thought provoking at all. So what they try to do to make up for it is scare you in other ways. You know that one sound? I, I like to call it the horror movie boom. It sounds like this. Yeah, that sound. I know you've heard it before. What this movie does like 10 times throughout the entire thing to try to scare you is make everything slow down and just make the background music go away and make all the characters be really quiet and have them slowly peer over to look at something and then play this sound loud as fuck. Notice I didn't include make something scary happen. No, they, they just walk or, or look and the music goes really quiet and then they just play this sound like loud as fuck into your ear. Not even for things that are scary, just for just normal normal stuff like walking down a hallway and then one of the doors are open and there's just like a girl in her bedroom it'll just fucking play the sound Alice <sighs> and it just makes you wonder like why why have all of these unnecessary jump scares that aren't even actually scares they just will take a normal thing that happens in the movie and then put the horror movie boom sound on it did they have like a scare quota that they had to meet by the end of the movie like i i just don't understand i hate it so much when horror movies or like scary video games do this jump scare thing and i've brought this up to a friend before and then he was like oh you you hate them because you always get scared of them and you you jump at them and stuff and that's why you hate them skill issue cope mauled and it's like yeah they work 90 percent of the time they do make me jump but this is why i hate them i'm gonna give you an analogy to explain it right so let's say i'm a comedian and then i tell you to come to my comedy show and then you're like okay i, I mean sure but it takes a lot to make me laugh though like you're gonna have to be really funny because i've seen so many comedy shows before you're gonna have to just blow it out of the park to make me laugh at your jokes and i'm like don't worry i have a plan i'm gonna make you laugh so then you show up to my comedy show and i'm like oh hey it's you and then i walk down off the stage up the aisle to your seat and then start fucking tickling you. And then as I'm tickling you, I tell a joke. And it's like, I, I well, I made you laugh. You know, I'm such a good comedian, aren't I? Like, like I make everybody laugh all the time. Who needs to actually go up on a stage and tell a funny story with a setup and a punchline when I can just walk down the aisle and go to your seat and then like fucking tickle you and force you to laugh even though you don't want to. It's the same thing with horror movies like this. Why make an actual concept that's scary and disturbing and make a gradual build up and make the viewer or feel dread and suspense and worry over time when I can <laughs> when I can just do that it's a fucking joke don't you feel cheated right now like don't you feel like shit don't you feel a little embarrassed for thinking that that was a real loading screen for a second the reason you feel cheated and you don't actually feel satisfied instead is because that was unfair and there was nothing that you could have done to know that i was about to scare the shit out of you there was no build up there was no like tension or suspense or anything i just went like boo and scared you
Like, look at this. You can literally just see the jump scare in the audio track of the movie. Is this the meta? Is this just like the new strategy for this now just have everything go as normal then a moment of silence and then a loud noise rah boo scary G give my movie a good review now please i could just end it right here and say the movie sucks but i do want to talk about the plot a little bit because i'm a complete expert on it and the reason i'm an expert is because this movie has more exposition in it than any movie i've ever seen in my entire life even more than madam web characters will just explain things for no reason and the characters do this throughout all of the movie but the most ridiculous example of it is at the very beginning of the movie and at the very end because the people writing this movie didn't really know how to set the stage and everything so they just have this guy blurt out the entire situation and what they're doing it's this apartment the move all the stuff with my ex it's just too much stress. And then when Alice goes missing, who is the name of the little girl who has the imaginary friend, they just talk to this old lady who just conveniently knows everything about the universe, apparently, and then she just tells them everything. But sometimes when the child is separated from her imaginary friend in an unnatural or sudden way, the trauma can cause the entity to hunger for the child's imagination. Imaginary friends derive off of a child's creativity and imagination. It feeds that hunger. Jessica's creativity was especially vibrant and powerful. When their connection was severed, her friend's hunger turned violent. The friend that Jessica was separated from didn't just disappear. He waited in that house. And it's like, dude, I I've never seen a movie in my entire life that at the end of it just has a YouTube video explaining all of the lore of the world and how everything works like just tells you there's somebody who wrote this there's somebody who's like well you know there might be a few six-year-olds watching that just haven't really figured out what's going on yet let's just have one character that just conveniently knows everything just explain it and the person who's giving all this exposition by the way is this old woman who lives next door now the main character jessica used to have an imaginary friend when she was younger but she just conveniently forgot all of her memories of her being a kid and it's just like never explained why she just did because somebody just like slapped her in the face i guess and she just forgot everything and this old lady that lives next door used to babysit her when she was younger and just learned all of these things about imaginary friends because jessica used to have one she's the only character in this entire movie to die they end up going to this imaginary dream world where imaginary people are from i guess and in this world she gets killed by being dragged behind a door by this bear creature she just dies behind a door and there's not one drop of blood there's no gore there's nothing she just dies and i like how they thought well you know somebody has to die in this movie right to show that this enemy is dangerous but we can't have it be any of the main characters because we want all of them to live so that there can be a sequel so well i guess we just have to kill this woman there's this one moment towards the end of the movie where they need to do some type of ritual to enter that imaginary world that i was talking about and there's a list of requirements you have to go through to be able to open up this portal to get there and one of them is something that really hurts so jessica stabs the side of her hand with some scissors but i guess it's not enough pain to open up the portal so what she does on top of that is insult her stepdaughter and tells her that she's super entitled and like an asshole basically and then the portal opens up so then as you're wondering to yourself and putting the pieces together in your brain and you're like wait i thought it was supposed to be jessica's pain why would the portal open if someone else was hurt and the second you're about to piece it together and actually have a satisfying moment where you actually came to a realization about something in the movie this old lady just explains it for you it's like oh what happened here is that it actually hurt jessica to say it to you and, and that was act the pain needed to open the portal and it's just like shut up dude let me watch the movie none of the other characters are any better i think the thing that gets on my nerves the most about this movie is the little girl alice she looks to be about i don't know like 11 or 12 or something and for some reason she just has the most annoying voice i've ever heard in my entire life simon kind of scares me yeah he's icky oh. you should kill him your grandma sounded nice my mom's too. It's so big. Maybe dad will let me get my multi pin now. 16. Hang in there, Squidward. It's all part of the job. And then later when I was learning more about this movie and watching some YouTube videos on it, I came across this interview with some of the actors. And in this interview, th the girl doesn't even sound like that in real life at all. Um, I think this is a fear for all m mothers and moms. Um, their child's- So, did the people making the movie just tell her to sound as obnoxious and annoying as fuck? Why- why tell her to sound like that? 
Besides the omnipotent old lady that knows everything about the universe and the most annoying human being I've ever seen in a movie in my entire life, all of the other characters are just cliches that have been lifted out of other movies. Like we have this super angsty, mean teenager that is actually nice on the inside, but it's just like super mean and closed off. And then we have her love interest, which is like this other teenage guy. What happens with him is while Jessica is away, she invites this guy over to like hang out i guess and he brings over these drugs in a ziploc bag which I, I guess this is supposed to be molly or something and this guy is in the movie for literally no reason other than to just have more like horror movie boom sound jump scares when he walks around the house investigating things and in case you still think that i'm over exaggerating with the horror movie boom sound thing or i'm nitpicking or something take a look at this Please. Like, why? Why? She's just walking up the stairs. Why is this a jump scare? Why put this here? If they didn't put the sound there, then it wouldn't be scary. Did they finish this movie and then watch it back and realized that there wasn't any scary moments in the whole movie? So they just took select scenes and just added this there? Some of the only scary things in this entire movie are just jump scares of a woman walking down a hallway to a door that's already open that she can see is open as she walks up to it but yet is still scared by it and of uh, another person walking upstairs that they're walking down even though they can see them approaching i'm so off topic L let me get back to talking about this guy he doesn't even die or anything he just comes over to her house and has this stupid scene where he leaves to go pee and then as he's peeing he sees Alice's bear under this blanket and then it just like disappears in front of his face and then there's a horror boom sound and it scares him. And then he leaves the bathroom without even flushing the toilet or washing his hands and, and that's it. That's, that's everything. You never see him again in the entire movie. I think I mentioned earlier how this is basically just a PG movie and I don't even really know how it got rated PG-13. But my theory is that they added in these super unnecessary things that have nothing to do with progressing the story or even developing any characters at all. Like just randomly having the guy come over with drugs for no reason just because. He doesn't even really use them and they have nothing to do with the plot. They're not something that you're supposed to remember that show up later. I literally think that this was added into the movie to make it PG-13 because otherwise this would be a PG movie. Because think about it, there's no blood, there's no gore, there's not even any cursing, there's no dark themes at all. There's nothing that would make this movie PG-13 except for this guy having drugs so if you go online and actually check the rating it says that it's rated pg-13 for some violent content and drug material meaning that if this movie didn't have the grandma dying behind a door and didn't have this guy just randomly show up with drugs the movie would be rated pg isn't that insane now let's talk about the actual antagonist of this movie so the little girl Alice has an imaginary friend that takes the form of this bear doll, but what it actually looks like is this. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. It, it looks like this. Um, so this is what this suit looks like, uh, like on set, like outside of the movie. And uh, yeah, this is like some shit you see on like Pinterest, you know, you type in like, like FNAF, like cosplay, scary into pinterest and you're gonna just find stuff like this i actually think that five nights at freddy's death screens look better than this monster does in this movie and that was a game that was created by one man back in like 2016 that fnaf 4 came out that's insane the thing that has me confused though isn't how fucking horrible this bear looks i can understand that what has me confused is that throughout the movie it's not just this bear that's terrorizing everybody sometimes in shots in the background you'll see this weird mystery man like this silhouette guy that just watches the characters from the background and they put him in the most noticeable places so you can't help but see him but this guy is never addressed in the movie nobody ever notices him he's never he doesn't even have a name he never attacks any of the characters he never does anything really except stand in the background of certain shots and it begs the question who is this guy what what is he why is he here does he have something to do with the bear or with somebody's imagination or does he does he haunt the house i thought by the end of the movie they would explain or resolve who this dude was supposed to be but as, as far as i know they never did 
did they just go back in editing and just add this dude in the background of shots to make the movie more scary that has to be it because he he it's like he doesn't exist or anything he's never addressed it's like while filming they were like well you know the movie isn't really turning out to be that scary you know it's just a basic storyline that you would find in a backyard against episode but it's all cool because we can just go in editing and just throw some monsters in there and in the background and you know just throw some horror movie boom sounds and we'll just we'll just add like some mystery men in the background it's cool it's fine about two-thirds in the movie jessica hires this therapist to talk to alice because alice earlier tried to slam her hand on a nail in her backyard because her imaginary friend gave her like this list of like some rituals she had to do to bring the imaginary friend to life or something so jessica hires this therapist for her and she comes out to their house and then talks to alice and th i think this might be the worst therapist in the history of humanity like since adam and eve i don't think there was ever a worse therapist than this woman so alice and the therapist talk for a little while before alice stops talking to the therapist and then turns and starts having a conversation with her imaginary friend and just has a full-on conversation with him and then starts saying the words that the imaginary friend is saying in the conversation I told you it made me scared Chauncey need Alice be brave. Chauncey keep Alice safe. I just- So during this whole time she's flipping out and panicking as she's like arguing with her imaginary friend and then he's telling her not to listen to the therapist and that everybody else like hates her or something. And the therapist is trying to like pat her on the back and calm her down and it doesn't work and Alice just ends up running out of the therapy session crying. Jessica notices this and walks over to the therapist to ask about what happened. So the therapist shows her the video footage from their session and as they're watching it together the therapist realizes that when the imaginary friend was talking it was it wasn't actually just Alice saying his words. It was the imaginary friend talking in her voice. Anything to Alice, Mom. I hurt you and your three ugly granddaughters because as you can see she's still talking as her mouth is closed so the therapist asked jessica if alice has been getting into ventriloquism lately uh, what I, I need to ask has sally's taken off any new hobbies lately ventriloquism ventriloquism that's her genuine response to this is okay well like is alice like into ventriloquism or something because like, you know she has an imaginary friend but like the imaginary friend talks while her mouth doesn't even move and like while she's in like a different space in the room from where the voice is coming from is she into ventriloquism by any chance so the therapist opens up her laptop to show jessica a video of another therapy session that she had a couple years ago with another kid who also had an imaginary friend and that kid's imaginary friend drove him to cut off his finger and then she just gives jessica this whole exposition spiel about how imaginary friends could be dangerous and how they need to put a stop to this and it'll just get worse and worse until like she hurts herself even worse than trying to like slam her hand on a nail and then she goes on and on and on about imaginary friends and how like they're like the personification of like the kids feelings everybody in this world is just an expert on imaginary friends everybody everybody has a master's degree in imaginary friendology in this world for some reason i i don't know why i really just don't this has to be the worst horror movie ever made of, of all time let me just hurry up and put the shit on the tier list so i can be done i gotta go to work soon so far in the bad movie tier list we have the equalizer 3 morbius the suicide squad madam web megamind 2 Highlander, Replicas, and Highlander 2. I think this is an easy one. Uh, this goes in skull tier right above Highlander. I, I, that was the easiest ranking in my life. Megamind and Madam Web are definitely better movies, but I feel like Highlander is slightly worse and Replicas and Highlander 2 are just in another world. I'm just perplexed that this movie wasn't canceled and they actually went through with this. This is the most uninspired, lazy horror movie I've ever seen in my whole life. The fact this is in fourth place is just mind boggling to me. As I'm watching through this movie, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty bad. This is terrible. But then when I actually go to the tier list and take a look at what I got, it's like, dude, this is so much worse than a large majority of the movies I've talked about on this channel. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you know, leave a comment for what movie you want me to talk about next. I'm really tired of talking about this movie. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go get ready for work. I'll see you guys later.